I would always recommend if you're looking to get started and you feel a bit lost, take a set that exists and modify it in some way, either to turn the core of it into something different or to maybe improve it, like Star Wars, take a ship and make it a little bit more screen accurate. Because if you're starting from a core, you don't have to start from scratch and you can practice your skills and see how those shapes develop. There's fantastic communities like Reddit and Instagram, Flickr, and a few other places where people are sharing their builds and their techniques. Facebook groups are a growing part of this as well. So if you're stuck on how to make a certain connection, it's worth reaching out to that wider community and asking for a bit of uh, assistance there. Another really good website, uh, which I've seen is Rebrickable where people upload their own instructions for even sometimes taking a set and turning it into a completely different build. So you have all the parts you needed to get started, but you might not know what to do. And there's so many examples on Rebrickable uh, and free instructions of designers taking these kits and showing you just what can be accomplished. So that would be my recommendation. Start with a set and either try and turn that into something new or tinker with that to get something that's a little bit better into your tastes. Once you've built a few sets or you've tried a few other people's instructions, it helps you formulate your own ideas and maybe think that you can approach something in a little bit of a different way. I had Lego as a kid, uh, as most did, but I went into my dark ages. Uh, I rediscovered Lego in 2016 which was when LEGO released uh, set 42056, the uh, Porsche, the Technic Porsche GT3 RS, because I've always I've been a lifelong Porsche fan. So when uh, LEGO released that set, I had to have it. And that's when I rediscovered my passion for LEGO, LEGO Technic in particular. Uh, so since 2016, I've uh, slowly been building up the collection of uh, Porsches, building them in the different colours as those colours became available uh, in Technic. So I haven't painted any pieces, they're all, uh, all official LEGO Technic pieces, so that limits you to what colours you can do. Part of the fun on sourcing all the different uh, pieces in the different colours. And then uh, when I built all the colours, uh, that's when I built the rainbow, rainbow version to use all the random colours. So that's my latest build because um, I'd run out of colours to build a, a different one. So all the colours of the rainbow. And I also built the rally, the rally version, uh, or the Paris Dakar version, which was quite fun and enjoyable, uh, adding all the different features over and above the set. And uh, whilst I was doing that, I've also got the, um, the timeline of vintage Technic sets, starting from the first set in sort of 1977, the original sort of auto chassis Technic uh, one to eight scale car. So I've just accumulated those as they've progressed through the 70s, 80s, 90s. And uh, I've added a studless or a modern studless recreation of each of those studded sets. So yeah, it's been great to then take that passion and take it around to all the different Lego exhibitions around the country. I've been to most of the big shows in the capital cities. You can very quickly spot the Porsche enthusiast or the Technic enthusiast when they are uh, make a beeline for my display and so it's great to share that passion uh, with like-minded uh, individuals. I'd say probably start by picking uh, picking what you enjoy whether it's cars or construction vehicles or aircraft. Uh, start with a smaller sort of Technic set to get used to building the, the gears and the working and moving mechanisms uh, and then you can start modifying an existing set is always good. So you've got the set as a, as a base to start with and modify to suit whatever you're looking to achieve. Uh, and then that's, that's a great stepping stone into building your own Technic uh, creation uh, from scratch essentially. So by starting with a simple set, you can get the basics, uh, whether it's steering or suspension or movement, uh, mechanical movement. Um, that gives you the fundamentals and you can just expand and get sort of more complicated as you as you gain in confidence. Dan Siskin and his team have basically designed them um, and I've either bought the kits or done the instructions. They've bought their instructions and then done all the brick linking and all the sourcing of parts from all over the country to build them. I always liked military stuff as a kid. You know, grew up playing Command and Conquer and Total Annihilation and you know, all those old, old school 90s video games and you know, even on the Nintendo and all that. Um, and I've always liked military, I always loved it, military aircraft and helicopters and all that. 
found them by accident on the internet, bought a couple, because they're expensive, and then kind of fell down the rabbit hole. And uh, keep buying, because <laughs> I just love the detail in them. Um, they're so detailed, there's so much, um, like you can tell they do their research and they try and make it as accurate, historically accurate as possible. Um, and now they actually have the licensing from Sikorsky and a, a few other companies, AM General for the Humvees. Um, they put a lot more detail in them, so they're close to realistic as they can physically get them, which is kind of what you all want. You want it to look as best as it can with Lego. Good thing is about this stuff, the way I do it, it's modularized. So the helicopters, I know I can fit three to a 1.8 meter table. Um, so, you know, I can do six tables, eight tables, two tables, so it's all scalable. And I usually just rotate the helicopters through different ones. Or if we're doing different shows, um, back up in Brisbane, we did Kite Fest um, by the water. So I had the Navy, Navy and Marine helicopters with me. And, you know, always got to have a fire truck. Kids love the fire trucks and they always spot that first. Usually they go, fire truck, oh look. Get ideas from everybody else when you go to different shows. Um, that's how I learnt. Um, I remember my first Lego show um, back as an adult. Uh, I had no idea what I was getting myself in for and a lot of the guys and girls in the club taught me different things about telling little stories and just start off small and then work your way big. You don't have to fill eight tables. Just you know, even half a table, just do something small and then improve from there. Um, good thing about a lot of the shows and a lot of the, um, the lug groups is there's a lot of people to give you feedback and bounce ideas off. Yeah, brick link and all your cheap sets and um, yeah, stop, pick up stuff on clearance. Um, lug bolts are a wonderful thing, especially when you're trying to do, I want to tile this eventually and I need a lot of tiles. So lug bolts good for getting tiles. You know, even today, I was talking to a young lady and the way she's used the light on the battery box at the back of her train. I never occurred to me to even try and use that light on the battery box, on the power, powered up. Yeah, the new powered up Bluetooth ones. Never occurred to me. And she showed me how they put the little, little light box, and you know, little um, white tiles to reflect the light out the back through a clear brick. I'm like, that's genius. Why didn't I think of that? Always, always learning off everybody else. And there's always somebody out there who might just have that one idea that you've you've never heard of, but it'll be the best thing ever. I got into Lego um, just by collecting the Harry Potter sets, um, and I realised that I could actually make a quite a decent scene out of it. Um, and so I did that in my house, and I realised that there was a whole community out there that was interested adults um, in building Lego. So my husband and I, Bruce, uh, joined that Lego community, and it's just spiralled from there, really. I got into building um, miniature scale Lego designs um, purely for space reasons and so I did that for a couple of years but lately I've turned to life size um, just for um, a change um, so that inspired me to build a life size octopus um, and to give him a home for it. People ask me uh, yeah how to get involved as a beginner or how to kind of get further involved in building. Um, I always suggest taking a theme that you really enjoy building. Um, the train guys or buildings or aircraft or something and to start um, building that into a scene. And there's quite, there's always people in the Canberra Lego user group that are interested in the, usually the theme that you're interested in well as well. And coming to shows like this is really helpful because you can see the ways that other people build, get information on resources, on where to get uh, the best places to buy more bricks or at a discount um, or even just borrowing bricks for shows because a lot of the displays we do are only for a year so they get pulled apart and we're willing to kind of lend bricks. So being part of the community is a great way to, um, re to find resources really and to, for knowledge on the best way to build. Got into Lego like most people when I was really young. One of my early sets was the Yellow Castle, the 375. And um, basically up until my teenage years, you know, had lots of sets and then for about 20 years, nothing much. And then saw a little Star Wars minifig on um, an auction site, bid for it for 99 cents and I won. When I received it, I went, oh, this is cool. Let, let's see what else is out there. And then I discovered basically everything else that's currently Lego. So there's a whole 
multitude of worlds out there. So our build today, myself and my wife, uh, we're building, we built a Viking village with a sea battle. Um, the Vikings are fighting Jormungandr, um, which is one of Loki's kids, children, the middle child, I believe. And it's also called the Midgard Serpent. And the legend goes, Thor is the person that, the god that fights Jormungandr. But at the moment, the villagers are having to deal with him. Um, the, I think in pictures, so I had this in my head for a number of years, bought lots of pieces from um, online resources like Bricklink and then pulling apart the sets we bought. And then I got my wife to help me with the village setting and you know coming up with stuff. So I did the, basically the structure and the overall story and she was helping me with the sort of the smaller stories like how how do the Vikings get water on top of the mountain? Let's build a spring. Um, so that's basically how the build just came about and basically the way it looks today. Well, if you're just getting into Lego or if you haven't touched Lego bricks for years and just picking them up, just pick up a bunch of bricks and just play with them. And it's, it's, it's like painting for me. Um, you put it together and it looks a certain shape. But if you look at it from a distance, you can create something else. And then you move things around. Um, going with the Lego sets that are available and seeing which sort of sets appeal to you, whether it's sort of building structures or the um, plants or sort of um, a city, like a village or a town. Um, just find what you interests you the most and just start playing with it and then I'm sure you'll be as creative as anybody else. I've been building Lego since I was about five years old and I was given one of those assorted tubs and the Bionicle Toatahu. Uh, my dad back in the day in the 80s uh, also was very into Lego with the classic space so it's been passed down to me a bit through the generations. I've always been a big fan of Star Wars, like my dad passed that on to me as well and when Lego Star Wars came out in the early 90s I was quite young and the perfect sort of age to get stuck into building LEGO Star Wars and that love has persisted really ever since. And the series behind me I've been working on for coming up on three years. Uh, it really actually started about six years ago back when I was working at the LEGO Land in Melbourne as a master model builder and I built a couple of lightsabers for a Star Wars promotion we were doing. I had those designs in the back of my head for about two, three years until coincidentally just before COVID, I decided I wanted to get stuck into building those again, popped them online about uh, three to four of them and they got quite a positive response and people wanted to build them. And so I started making instructions for the builds and started getting requests on, well, can you try this character? Would you be interested in this one? And then of course with 2020 and the pandemic hits, I had nothing but time up my sleeve. And so it was the perfect opportunity to get started into making the series that ended up behind me. Uh, so what started as about four lightsaber hilts has grown to 77 on the total display with about 12 bladed versions and 60 total designs captured, a few with different versions here and there. So the Canberra LEGO user group has been around for just over 10 years and has grown now to a membership of around 200 members uh, from age four through to age 80. And so the, really the idea is to try and connect the community with our LEGO builders. And in this particular case, particularly with the big show, uh, we welcome our interstate uh, colleagues as well, uh, from Brisbane and from Sydney, from Victoria as well, uh, and uh, really to get to have a good chance to have a bit of a chat about uh, some of the good things that we do. And so there's different techniques that are happening all the time, different ways people put things together. Sometimes they collaborate across the, across the way. So we have people here from three different states, for example, contributing to a same layout. And so one way that we like to do that across the LEGO community is we have an, a bunch of standards and we have some different types of ways of building things. And so what that can tend to do then is it's all very modular as the brick is itself. And so the idea then is that we can all build to a certain standard, build a particular module or a couple of modules and bring them together and sort of plug them together and, and, and piece by piece, you can build a great display. And the train layout is a good example of that where you can just build what you need to do and then that's your section that you can contribute 
uh, overall. And so basically what we like to try and do is just encourage our, our builders, whether they be young or older, older builders, and, um, and really try to bring that together as a sense of community. So the number of advantages to being involved in, in Clug and the LEGO community, and I think one of those initial ones is just being, just talking to some fellow people that are interested in, in, in LEGO and just building some of those ideas. But we also uh, like to share the, the events around that are run by, by our fellow user groups around the, around the country. So there's the opportunity to travel uh, and it's all voluntary. So you go around, but it, you can make a bit of a holiday of that or a long weekend or those sorts of things, uh, whether you travel to Melbourne, to Sydney, to Brisbane. And we, uh, we quite often sort of share those, those, those arrangements. There's also the, um, the Lego Masters Australia. Uh, so uh, some of our top end builders get an opportunity to, to sort of go on a show like that or do those sorts of things. There's also some of our builders that are really, really good at de developing instructions on how to build uh, or rebuild a particular model uh, out of, whether it be Technic, whether it be out of the system bricks or, or what have you. And so they have the opportunity perhaps to uh, be able to share their instructions for free for certain people, or sometimes they actually then, uh, they can actually sell those instructions for others to help build. And so they can make a little bit of money off, the, uh, off those types of things to make it like a small business. Some of our people are also collectors. They, they buy a whole bunch of sets and over a period of time, they then might, uh, they might sell them later on and, uh, and sort of use that more as an investment type, type activity. And certainly a lot of members in our club will buy maybe two of the new set coming out. They might build one and put one away for later on um, as they go forward. So plenty of opportunities to be able to, to explore how to improve your brick building uh, and, and your techniques around those things, but also uh, maybe, your, maybe your collection. You might like to find some, some older sets that people haven't, that you might have missed in, in your collection that other people might have, you can buy. Uh, and then also get involved in the community more Australia-wide. Um, and even a couple of our members have had the opportunity to travel uh, internationally to New, uh, to New Zealand or to America, um, even, over to, even over to Europe, uh, where there's activities on um, to, to be able to do various things with, with the Lego.